Hi guys, my name is Catherine. For those of you who are here for the first time, I tell true stories and this is my story today. In the last video, I promised that I'm going to tell you about the exorcism stories. These are the stories about uh, removing the demon from someone. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the most deadliest stories ever in the life of the exorcist priest. A failed exorcism, an exorcism gone bad. Now, in order to remove a demon from someone, it just doesn't take a day. Well, it depends on the kind of demon that you're dealing with or demons in that person. First of all, you have to study the person, as I said in my last video. Know whether it's a medical condition or it's a demonic infestation. So in this story I'm going to tell you about a lady by the name um, Annalise. Actually her actual name was uh, Elizabeth Anna Michelle, born in 1952 there and died on July, I think 1st of July 1976. Not so long ago. Not so long ago. So this is what happened. This was a failed exorcism, we don't know. It actually not failed because it succeeded. The demon left her, but she died. She died after the demon left her. And this led to the two priests who were carrying out the exorcism to be arrested. Her parents also were arrested. For six months, they were given a term of six months imprisonment, but it was reduced to three months probation. Reason? The nature of the case. The nature of the case. Because people say she died, as per the doctors, they say she died of malnutrition and hydration. Uh, but for the exorcist, she was attacked by the demon. The demon used her body until she died. So it's that complicated. Because she portrayed all the symptoms of... Uh, she was diagnosed by the doctors after she began to fall ill, as in uh, lose appetite, stop eating. Um, she was diagnosed with um, epileptic... What is it called? Epileptic... Uh, what do you call this epilepsy? Just a moment. It's a disease called epilepsy, epileptic psychosis, psychosis. Epileptic psychosis is a kind of epilepsy that has uh, similar symptoms to hallucinations, uh, uh, paranoia, you know, schizophrenic kind of reactions as in if you're paranoia you always imagine somebody has a bad intention you know, you will view an accident as an intention it was done intentionally, it was not an accident you will be looking at everyone suspiciously, like they want to harm you and so you will produce a kind of reaction against it and hallucinations you will make you do some bodily actions that of similar to somebody who's possessed. So this was what caused the confusion between uh, whether she was really sick or she had a demon in her or demons. So this is the story. Annalise was actually brought in a very brought up in a very devout Catholic environment. They were practicing Catholic, serious. But her mom messed up. She had adultery and had a baby. She had a baby out of uh, adultery. And this forced them to go into serious atonement. Atonement is like you're trying to make up for the past sins of your mother or whoever did it. You know, to avoid punishment. Like us presently, we are suffering from the past sins of Adam and Eve. So we are facing the wrath now. So to avoid this, they were, you know, she had to go a lot of atonements. So she was a religious person, very unlikely to be attacked by a demon. So, but then 
one time she woke up and she felt some heaviness uh, below her in her groin. It's like it was so heavy. She felt like she was carrying something. And a few days later, she became very sick, nosetic, throwing up any time. And then a few months later, she portrayed symptoms of epilepsy. This was what I said. And she was diagnosed for epilepsy by the doctors. And so they were giving her medication for psychiatry and epilepsy at the same time. For five years, she was under this medication, but nothing used to change. And she was in intense prayer. And one day, her three other sisters saw something like a stigmata in her hands. You know, stigmatas are signs of the wounds that Jesus received when he was, you know, nailed on the cross. So it left some, you know, stigmatas. Actually, they say it's here, but in reality, the stigmatas they say appear here, but in reality, uh, the nail was put here as per, I mean, because if you put there the nail, of course, it will tear through, you know, when they put him on the cross. So it's believed that the nail was put here. I don't know how well in there, so it's up to you to judge. So what happened is, um, she, when she was praying, the sisters noticed that she had the stigmatas and it was bleeding. And during her prayers, one time she saw a vision of a demon ridiculing her, like, what are you trying to do? You know, what are you trying to do, my friends? And you know, the demons don't just talk. She could hear voices also. They just don't talk in a polite way, like, what are you trying to do, my friend? They try to be as scary as scary can be. That's their, that's their aim, to make you scared, just to torment you as much as they can. So she was in this situation, five years of uh, medication and nothing was working and one time her friends came to visit her in her room and uh, he found her in you know this this you know uh position like she's trying to avert a cross on her wall as in now she became a victim of any holy or sacred item will make her sick this, this is just some of the signs of a persist person. And she was eating insects. As in, you know when you're possessed, it's not you doing these things. So it was definitely the demon eating insects to make it look as bad as it can. Sometimes her face will be distorted, you know, take different shapes, things like that. And so, the parents, after all these years came to a conclusion that no, this needs an exorcism. And so they had to ask for permission from the priests who, who refused but were given permission finally by their bishop. Because in order to carry out an exorcism, you need to get permission from the bishop. You just don't wake up. And as I said before, there are specialist priests who have to do this. Not anybody will just wake up and say, I am going to do an exorcism. An exorcism, my friend, a demon is not something to joke around with. It is something very dangerous. It's a dangerous spirit because it's also very powerful. So, finally they were given permission. And the moment they were given permission, she stopped her medication. So you can imagine, she stopped her medication that the doctor had recommended. So, the demon really made use of her body. They were very powerful demons. And 67 exorcisms, exorcisms were to be carried out before it could be removed. They could be removed, not it, because there were several. 67. And in one of her prayers, she said that she saw the Virgin Mary who told her that on the 1st of July, it would be the end of her tormenting, which happened. She died. And that was the end of her tormenting, tormenting, tormenting by the demons who are in her. You know, when you're tormented by the demon, they use your body because they're spirits. So they will go as far as they can, maybe jump onto the ceiling, hit you on the ground, bring you back to the ground, scratch the walls. So all this time they're using your body. So 
So you can imagine what bruises she had on her body. How distorted her body was getting because they were using it all in their spirit so they can do anything with their, with their body. You know? Make you scratch yourself. So she used to be tied so that this demon does not have the power to, you know, raise itself and hit itself on the walls. Things like that. So all this was damaging her body. The ties she had, the distortion it's using, the lifting and everything it's doing on her body. It's not an easy thing, man. And so what happened is that finally she was released from this demon. And guess who the demons were? Think demons. You know, when when an exorcist needs to do uh, an exorcist, an exorcist, they need to know the demons they're dealing with. That part, I don't know why they need to know the names of the demons they're dealing with. So they ask them their names by force. And when they're asking them their names, of course, they will insult who the priest who's trying to ask their names. Call him all sorts of names to scare him also. But then finally, they have to give up. They give their names so that you know you're dealing with this. Guess who it was? Lucifer. Himo herself, I don't know, spirit has no sex, so no gender. So I assume this spirit was called Lucifer, the demon itself. The demon itself it did not even have to send its, uh, you know, angels. It came into her herself. I don't know what she had done for heaven's sake. So it was Lucifer. There were six, as I said. Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. Of course, they say their names. And they just don't say them, I am Lucifer, I am Judas Iscariot, I am Nero, I am, um, who else was this? There was uh, Lucifer, Nero, Judas Iscariot, Hitler. So at least you know these guys are in hell. Nero, Hitler, these are the modern guys. But now they were possessing these guys. And then there was another priest. Who had been excommunicated from the church because of the murders he had committed and the assaults he had caused. He was called Father Schism or something. What was the name? Just a moment. There was the name of this father. His name was Fleshman Valentin Fleshman. He was also a German. How she came into contact with him, I don't know. But he also chose to possess her because he was also a German and she was a German. Hitler, of course, he caused so many deaths, more than six million at the camp. Genocide generally. Judas Iscariot, you know what he did already. Adolf Hitler. Nero. Nero was another evil. All these guys actually died of suicide. So they're in hell. Nero, suicide. Hitler, suicide. King Father. Stichman. Suicide. All these guys. Mm. And then there was Cain, of course, the one who killed Abel, his brother. He was also one of the demons that had to be removed from this lady. So you can imagine, she had six very powerful demons with Lucifer herself. And so when she died, a case had to be held because uh, the priest and her parents were accused of uh, homicide. You know, homicide, negligent homicide, as in you neglected to take medicine and this person died. And so you're tired of homicide, negligent homicide, which was not the case. This was a demon that had refused to come out of her. But they were given six months in prison, but it was reduced to three months of probation. So they were not imprisoned finally because of the nature of the situation there was proof of uh, of um, what do you call it there was a proof of uh, possession and there was also proof of uh, you know medical negligence so it was a very complicated case and this was the case of analyse so this is just what the demon can do in a in a exos in an exorcism. It's not an easy thing. So shout out to all these priests who chose to be exorcists. I don't know why. Just go and deal with the demon. So if you like my content, like, share and subscribe for more of this. Click that button. Ciao.